Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visit suprememastertv.com barre inclinada schedule. Barnome hoye ma shamil zabon hoye besiarist. Az in website didan farmoid suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Warning. You might find the content herein disturbing, but the truth must be revealed. First time? Yes. I said, the problem is what happens to the animals in the arena? This is our water. It's, it's all our water. World Vegan Day, Casa di Cane, Bucking Tradition, and the Farm in My Backyard. Continue watching to find out more. Abadi Gani means how are you in Swahili. I'm Gabu. The affectionate people of Kenya send you warmest greetings. Welcome to World Vegan Day, Casa de Cani, Birkin Tradition, and a farm in my backyard. Today is World Vegan Day, which is celebrated annually by vegans worldwide on the 1st of November. World Vegan Day was founded in 1994 by Louise Wallace, then chair and president of the Vegan Society in the United Kingdom, to celebrate the organization's 50th anniversary and the creation of the terms vegan and veganism. In recognition of this special day, let's take a look at three short but thought-provoking films related to the topic. Taza de Cane is a short film written directed and edited by filmmaker Dustin Brown for the non-profit organization Last Chance for Animals LCA. Set in the fictional high-end restaurant Casa de Cane, meaning meat house, Eric comes to have dinner for the first time with friends who are familiar with the place. The waiter explains that in the restaurant, they take the dining experience full circle. He asks Eric to start, and Eric orders baby back ribs, but he doesn't quite understand what the full circle means. First time? Yes. Follow me. Good luck. We'll be after. Handing Eric an apron and a knife, the waiter opens a door for him to enter. In the room stands a little pig who comes to him. The pig is so peaceful and cute and Eric can't help petting him and dropping the knife. At this moment, the door opens again, and two people in white coats come and roughly take the defenseless and helpless pig, who is scared and starts to scream, sensing what is going to happen. There's another one. You gonna do it? Back at the table, the dish Eric ordered is placed in front of him. His friends begin to eat, but Eric, having seen where his meal came from, is extremely shocked and feels miserable. He doesn't seem to know what to say nor do. The film ends there, director Dustin Bryan wrote. My job as a filmmaker is to raise questions and let people come to their own conclusions. I'd like this film to make people think and question their everyday reality. Now more than ever, we need stories that expand our circle of empathy and allow us to see the world through a more compassionate lens. It's easy to use our differences as starting points for conflict. Different race, different religion, different country, different species. And yet we are all sharing this planet. Our similarities far outweigh our differences.
Indeed, in just over two minutes, this short yet very powerful picture shakes our consciousness, making us think and question our everyday reality. Can we still eat meat if we have to slaughter an innocent being that has the exact same right to live on this planet as we do? This life-changing film, which received over 10 million views online, won first place at the 2019 Animal Film Festival and six Telly Awards, including gold for social responsibility. Let's take a moment to pray for the swift arrival of the vegan era on our planet. Directed by Sharon Boykel, the 2019 documentary Bucking Tradition explores the rodeo. Thousands of rodeo events are held annually in the US and worldwide, in which animals are subjected to horrible cruelty. When I climbed on my first bronc, and I was ready to put the spurs into the shoulders, I felt on top of the world. I never thought about the pain and misery I was causing the animals. And the cowboys always say, we love our animals. They don't abuse them. They give them good feed and water and transportation. I said, all that is true. That's not my problem. I said, the problem is what happens to the animals in the arena. Calf roping is one of the brutal events of rodeo. Baby calves, sometimes on wind, are driven into the arena, roped, thrown, and tied ruthlessly. Again and again, the helpless calves suffer tremendous fear and pain, both physically and emotionally, both in the arena as well as during practice runs. In steer roping, the rider brutally wrestles the steer to the ground. Frank's stripe and metal spurs are painfully driven into the horse's shoulder to make the horse back. In the eight-minute film, the audience can see a clear picture of the cruelty involved under the cover of so-called sport and why many animal welfare organizations such as People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, Peter, a Shiny World Compassionate Award recipient, Shark Trust, and the Humane Society of the United States, HSUS, a Shiny World Benevolence Award recipient, oppose all the rodeo events. In the US, the state of Rhode Island has banned calf roping, and rodeo is forbidden in the United Kingdom and the Netherlands with many other European nations putting restrictions on the events. Honest and convincing, Bucking tradition makes us reflect and reevaluate and encourages people to switch to a life of kindness and compassion. The film won both Best Overall Film and Best Animal Welfare Film at the 2019 Ottawa International Vegan Film Festival. Finally, we present The Farm in My Backyard, a 2019 Canadian short documentary about the mink farms in Nova Scotia. As more and more people compassionately choose not to wear fur, some major retailers in the U.S., such as the giant department store Macy's, have announced they will no longer sell fur. Markets for this industry are closing down in many countries around the world. Nova Scotia, however, the second smallest province in Canada, has 116 mink farms. The government is increasing its support for this extremely cruel and damaging business, spending millions of dollars from taxpayers' money. The farm in my backyard takes us to the Yamaf region. Once a peaceful and beautiful area, it has now become heavily polluted by the intensive mink raising facilities. 
My husband and I came here with the hopes of uh, retirement. Came here to find a piece of paradise because we thought we'd found it. Very disillusioned to find out what was really going on in the background. downstream basically from a really really intensely populated area of mink ferns which basically have polluted our headwaters and we're feeling the brunt of that downstream from them. Mycocystin is the name of the toxin it gives off which kills. We're here in Yarmouth County the municipal bylaws say that you can't have a mink pen within 500 feet of a body of water. Just look, that's what they do anyway. In about 60 minutes, this short documentary shows the devastating damage to the environment and local residents' lives caused by the fur industry. It also places the inhumane practice of these intensive meat raising facilities in the spotlight. All over the world, governments, people are saying, we don't want this anymore, and they're being shut down. And here in little old Nova Scotia, what are we doing? We're saying, big money maker, let's, let's go with this. This is our water, it's, it's all our water. In the wild, minks are semi-aquatic and can live between 3 to 10 years near water in territories of up to 2,500 acres. In a mink farm, they are crowded in small cages and will be killed after just 6 months, never having met their most basic need to swim. The poor living conditions are heart-wrenching to see, and the suffering of the helpless animals is beyond words. What right do we have to put a living being through such pain and agony just for fashion when we have so many over trendy and beautiful cruelty free choices today? Produced by We Animals Media, this informative film is directed and photographed by Joanne MacArthur, a Shiny World Compassionate Award and Shiny World Compassionate Photographer Award recipient. Joanne founded We Animals Media with a mission to bring visibility to hidden animals worldwide through compelling photography and film. We Animals strives to build bridges between social movements, mentor the next generation of advocate media makers, and inspire solutions that will result in a kinder and healthier world for all. Casa de Cane, Birkin Tradition, and The Farm in My Backyard are three short but powerful films that inspire people to live a life of compassion and kindness towards all beings on our shared planetary home. This World Vegan Day, we pray that the world may soon welcome a vegan era in which humanity celebrates and respects all life on Earth. Be vegan, make peace. Cherish viewers, thank you for your gracious presence today. Coming up next is Shiny World Compassion Award recipient Mi Fan Chan, Nurturing Love, right after Noteworthy News, here on Supreme Master Television. With God's grace, may all of Earth's inhabitants enjoy freedom, peace, and contentment. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash cs.